Good morning, sisters and brothers. Woke up at four this morning. Not four, 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 but four. <laughs> but Jesus keeps speaking to me about getting ready as a bride, about filling our lamp with oil. And, uh, you know, how do we do that? How do we implement that from a pragmatic perspective? What can we do to make sure we're one of those five wise virgins and not one of the five foolish ones? Okay, so... Um, I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Verse 2. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil and jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Okay, what is the oil? The oil, you know, some say it's the Holy Spirit, and I believe that's an aspect of it, but I believe the oil is, it's our relationship with Jesus, okay? I mean, it's a state of being madly in love with Jesus, of living our lives, you know, every day waking up and saying, how can we live our lives to live out the Beatitudes, to live out His commandments. How, how can we flavor and season our lives so that the world knows we're His followers? We read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We read those words of Christ and read and we say, how can we really implement this in our lives? How do we love our enemies? How do we bless those who curse us? How do we humble ourselves as children? How do we serve God and not mammon? You know? How, how do we be forgiving people? So that God will forgive us our sins because we forgive others. Say that. How do we live a life where we're not judging people? You know, so that so that we ourselves won't face a harsh judgment. How do we have mercy instead of sacrifice, like you said? Um, and and I think that that is one of the most important elements of having oil on our lamp. You know, in other words, is what's important to our husband, to Jesus? Is that also important to us? We talked about this yesterday, but um, the things that break Jesus' heart, do they break our heart too? Because if we're his bride, if we're his wife, a good bride, a good wife is always concerned with the affairs of her husband, okay? I mean, you've, you know, we're, 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 we're not a gold digger. You know, hopefully we're not marrying Jesus for, for his money. You know, ho hopefully we're not, we're not just marrying Jesus for his benefits, for his kingdom. If we're a real bride, a real soulmate of Yeshua HaMashiach, if we are a true bride of Christ, a virtuous bride, then we're marrying him because we're madly in love with him. You know, we don't just want um, hell insurance or a get out of hell free card. We, 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 don't, we don't just want to be with him for, for his blessings, but, but we, we're madly in love with him. And the things that are important to him, his dreams, his aspirations, there are dreams too. The things that are, you know, we know that he said, if you love me, feed my sheep. So feeding his sheep will be important to us. All right? We know that he would leave the 99 to chase down the ones, the, the misfits, the outcasts. So that should be important to us, you know? Leaving the 99 found sheep and chasing those who were lost. We, we know that he was rejected as, you know, he's the stone the builders rejected. But yet he became the chief cornerstone. So we know that, you know, he knows what it's like to be rejected, to be a misfit, to, to be outcast. And we know that he has a heart for the outcast and the rejected. Hey, Sebastian. Hang on, I have to let Sebastian out. Sorry, he was, Sebastian was languishing. <laughs> languishing to go outside. Now he's back in. <laughs> Poor kitty. Poor kitty. Aww. <laughs> Give me a paw. Give me some paw. Give me some paw. Give me some paw. <laughs> You're feisty this morning. Um, alright, so the things that are important to him are will be important to us, alright? Look at how Jesus, look at how our groom, how our husband treated the outcasts like lepers. And, you know, he was the friend of sinners. And he reached out with kindness to prostitutes, thieves, tax collectors, the thief on the cross who was crucified beside him. Um, remember how he treated the adulteress? 
he, yes, he called her out of a life of sin, but he was kind to her. He was loving. He was sweet and gentle. He, he wasn't mean-spirited. He wasn't... He risked his own life, and he jumped between her and those who were going to throw stones at her. So that's how we should treat the outcast and, and sinners and people that society rejects. And yet, read Matthew chapter 23. The things that made Jesus angry, the things that upset him, well, those are the things that that need to make us angry, too. Wait, what is up with you, Sebastian, this morning? Come on. Hey, hey, hey. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter, boy? Come on. Let me finish this video. You have food. You have drink. What is it that you want? You want affection? What do you want? <laughs> All right, we'll have our lovely time in a minute. Let me finish this video. Try to make it short so it's not too long. Come on. Give me, give me some time. Give me some time. And then we'll, then we'll have lovely time. Okay? We'll have lovely time. All right, so. So. Meow. Um, where were we before my cat interrupted for the second time? <laughs> so. Yeah, the, the, and the things that make Jesus upset, okay? Yesterday we talked about this. Read Matthew chapter 23. That's what made Jesus angry. Those are the things that Jesus hates, right? Those are the things that... Oh, stop. Stop. Stop meowing, running around meowing. You won't stay inside. You won't stay outside. You're such a cat. You're such a cat. Okay, um... So... But the things that are important to Jesus will be important to us, right? So, Matthew chapter 23, we know, we know what upsets and makes our, our groom angry, all right? Jesus was furious at the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 23. He hated and despised the things that they did. I mean, he ripped them to shreds. So, we want to read that chapter, and we want to make sure that those things are not in our heart. If we want our lamps full of oil, make sure that we don't swallow the yeast of the Pharisees. Make sure that Make sure that the things that they did that upset Jesus so bad, we don't do too. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, the things that are important to him would be important to us, right? Um, Alright, so starting at verse 6. A minute they cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. And so in verse 9, that's important to note, you know, um, we, we couldn't, even if we wanted to, we can't give brides without oil our oil. You know, that is an individual thing. Y you have to spend time in prayer. You have to spend time cultivating a relationship with Jesus and getting to know your groom. You have to spend time reading his word and trying to obey and implement it in your life, trying to season and flavor your life with the teachings of Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He said, keep my commandments, not those of Moses, but my specifically. Yes, we need to keep the law of Moses too, the Ten Commandments, but we need the Holy Spirit even to do that. But when Jesus, in context, when Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, he meant specifically what he was saying, his teachings. Remember he said a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I've loved you? All right, it's not an old one, it's an, he said it was a new one. So he's, that, he's adding on to, he's, he's doing a new thing, okay? It's not the same old, same old. He says, a new commandment I give to you. Love each other as I loved you. All right? John 13, 34. And then in verse 35, he says, By this the world will know that you're mine. If they see that you have love for others, that you have love for one another. Okay? You can't give that to another bride. All right? If you're a wise virgin, you can't give that oil you can't give your obedience to Christ, your, your love for him, your devotion to him. Even if you wanted to, you can't share that with another virgin. That is something that only each virgin can acquire for herself, okay? So if you want to fill your lamp with oil, 
you yourself have to live a life in obedience to the words of Christ of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You yourself have to cultivate a lifestyle whereby your life is seasoned and flavored with the teachings of Jesus Christ, the words of Christ in red ink and the Gospels. And you yourself have to have a relationship and prayer and, and just spending time with him and walking with him and, and, and knowing him. Nobody else can do that for you, okay? And Jesus tells us that right here in verse 9. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. They're saying the only thing they can, that the five wise virgins are saying, look, you need to go and, and cultivate a relationship with Jesus on your own. It's the only hope you have. You need to go and you need to start living your life, flavoring and seasoning your life with the teachings of Jesus Christ and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John right now. Unfortunately for them, it was too late because the bridegroom had already come. The rapture had already happened. Verse 10, But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Remember, Jesus also said that in another place, in Matthew. They came to him and they tried to, they tried to impress him. You know, Lord, Lord, we, we had a ministry in your name. You know, it was a deliverance ministry or a word of faith or we were missionaries or, you know, a ministry to the homeless. Or, or It doesn't matter how great and good the ministry was. Unfortunately, you can still do it from the wrong motive. You, you can still go to church every time the church doors are open and you can still be volunteer in all these church activities, but you can still not have a passionate, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. You can still be lukewarm. Believe it or not. And Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you. That's sobering. That's a bit scary, but it doesn't have to be scary. Because all we have to, to realize, all we have to take from this is that we have to spend time with them on our own when nobody else is watching us. You know, when we're not in front of a camera and, and the spotlight's not on us, we have to be madly crazy in love with him. And we need to be honest about our faults with others. We can't walk around like we're spiritual giants and make people think that we never have problems and that we don't struggle with weaknesses and sins. And, you know, there's just too much pride. There's this idea that we have to be all like, you know, these, these superheroes that, I'm sorry, but, you know, if you really want to reach people, if you really want people to open up to you, share your weaknesses. I didn't make that up. Paul wrote that. Paul said he would glory in his weaknesses so that God's strength, God's power would be magnified through him. He said that many of you were higher and noble when you were called, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and he chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong, so that no flesh could glory in his presence. You know? There's just way too many people putting on an act in the kingdom of God. You're trying to act like they're, trying to come off looking like they're spiritual giants, and, you know, honestly, you're going to achieve more if you just humble yourself and you share your struggle. Stop trying to look like you're perfect. There's only one. Even Jesus said only his Father God was good. Wow, he set us an example. So who are we? You know, how can we walk around like, 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 you know, we're the best thing since life sprouted? It's, I, know, I know we don't do it consciously, but we feel this compulsion, you know, because we don't want people to think we're weak in our faith. or We feel this compulsion not to be on the level with people not to tell them about the things that we struggle with. But that's totally biblical. It's, it's totally biblical for us to share our faults with each other. It's totally biblical, all right? We're, we're literally supposed, the Bible instructs us to confess our faults one to another. And in doing that, we actually glorify God. We give Him glory because we share our weaknesses. Hallelujah. Okay. 
Well, this is one aspect. This is one element. This this idea of the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. And so we see that this is an element of filling our lamp with oil. God just wants me to keep talking about this. How? How? We know that we should. We know the rapture is coming soon. We know that we need to be one of the five wise virgins. We know we need our lamp full of oil. But how do we fill it full of oil? Well, the things that are important to Jesus must be important to us. We have to be madly in love with them. And, and the things that broke his heart have to break our heart. And, you know, the things he got upset and angry about with the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 20, those are the things that we should get upset and angry about. We should all be like little Jesuses walking around. And when we see that yeast of the Pharisees, when we see that hypocrisy and that self-righteousness, we need to call it out. We need to call it as we see it and be like, this ain't right, children of God. You know, if that is something that Jesus spent an entire chapter on, Matthew chapter 23, if he was so angry and so furious, then it's worth examining our hearts and let's make sure that none of that that's in Matthew 23 is in our hearts. And if it is, let's, let's whip it out of our hearts. Let's uproot it and get rid of it. And if we see it in others, let's help them get free of it too. You know? And, and the things that Jesus was kind-hearted and soft-hearted about, reaching out to like lepers and prostitutes and the lame and the sick and, and the poor and the despised and adulteresses and <laughs> tax collectors and thieves hanging, being crucified by a month. You know, tonight you'll be with me in paradise, he told the thief. And look, look at how Jesus treated the outcast. The Pharisees hated him. Because he said he was a friend of sinners and he was always hanging out with them and eating dinner with them and treating them with it. It just really chapped their behinds that Jesus is so kind-hearted and sweet and loving to sinners. And yet Jesus turned on them in the temple. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer and you've made it a robber's den. Get out! And he whipped them. And he tore them to pieces in Matthew chapter 23. So if we want to be a wise virgin, if we want to fill our lamp with oil, let that, let that which is important to our husband be important to us as his bride, okay? Let, let the things that break his heart break our heart. The things that he loved and that softened him, we should love and they should soften us. And the things that made him angry, they should make us angry. Matthew chapter 23. So... This is just one aspect, and we'll talk about more as we get time. Love you.